Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today it's a customer or viewer request. They had asked me, how do we service a, uh, a big reel, a big lever drag tuna reel uh, off or offshore. And uh, I promised to do one of these as soon as one came into my shop. And, and here we go. We have a Shimano uh, trolling series 30. It's a Triton reel. Uh, this reel happens to be about uh, 30 years old. I believe it first started being manufactured in the uh, late 80s, 1987 to be specific. And I'm going to show you uh, how this reel is assembled, how to maintain it, how to go repair it if you have a problem, and how, to, uh, how it differs from a star drag reel. So <clears throat> we're going to do this. Um, we're not going to skip steps, but I'm going to tell you how the steps go. Uh, I did this yesterday and it was almost an hour to rebuild and I simply don't have the time uh, or the uh, the equipment to run an hour's uh, program, but uh, I won't skip the core steps. So the first thing I want to uh, tell you is that uh, we start this by uh, taking care of all of these pieces and parts because the pieces and parts are no longer available. So if you lose one or if one's broken, it becomes a parts reel. You'll see a couple of things that uh, you're used to. You'll see my, uh, I cover my glove hand with, uh, I'm sorry, my hand with a glove, not working. But this time around, uh, I use a parts tray, but I'm going to do an addition here. I'm going to use uh, plastic sandwich bags to hold various sets of parts. There's, uh, there's small parts in here. It's not, not many more than a, a star drag reel, but uh, because the parts are no longer available, I don't want to lose any. So, um, especially when you get into some of these screws. So I start by taking the handle off. That gives me access to an adjustment uh, wheel on this uh, uh, reel here. And that adjustment uh, is what pushes in or pulls out the, uh, the tension on the drag. It's a starting point that enables you to lock in where, uh, where the reel has first strike and, and where it's at full, um, full drag capabilities. Now, uh, one of the core differences between a, um, a star drag and a lever drag is, is the mechanism it uses to press the uh, the drag together to get the tension that's needed in order to uh, to make the uh, the contact there and spin the spool. So uh, a lever drag pushes in. So there's a series of drags on the side. We'll take it apart and we'll show you. And this lever is actually pushing the spool in, compressing the drag against the uh, drag plates, causing that uh, friction that enables you to moderate. Uh, the uh, the amount of pressure on that drag. So uh, we'll show you that when we take that off. So first off comes the uh, that tension uh, gear and then we're going to take the lever drag handle off and we're going to note that there's a plastic uh, washer that goes on that and we're going to leave that in this bag now. So the next thing I want to take off then is the, uh, the side plate screws and uh, what you'll see on this reel uh, I've been waiting for them to come in and they, they usually start coming in now because folks are making trips and things are happening. This reel uh, wasn't functioning properly uh, and the, the customer brought it into the shop for a general overhaul. I found that there was some broken line in there and some other things that caused it to uh, act erratically. But otherwise, all of the pieces and parts were there, which was good news because you can't get them. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show you, and again, I'll, I'll tell you which steps are eliminated because this took almost an hour to do yesterday. So this is the, uh, the channel that the lever rides on. It has a, uh, a free spool and a uh, full uh, engagement stop. It has two metal collars on it. It has two screws that go in the middle and it's the collar. So I'm going to put all of those in a bag. Again, uh, normally I would throw these in a parts bucket. There's a lot of small pieces and parts here and as long as you can break it into logical sequences about how you're uh, disassembling the reel then when you logically go to put it back you'll have all those pieces. Okay, side plate screws. There's a series of side plate screws. They all have washers on them. If you're taking this reel apart make sure that the washer comes out uh, as you uh, as you go to do this, uh, I'm sure it's not a, a world crisis if you don't 
if you lose one, but why take the chance? You know they're there, pull them all out, and that way it'll go in easy enough when you uh, get to put them back. It's a good time to tell you if you don't know the reel you're working on, and this one's fresh in memory, but don't think that I haven't done this, go pull the schematic for the reel. And you can see right here the, the TTS-30, the Triton trolling series. This is an exposed view of the, uh, the pieces and parts, so if you get lost along the way, uh, that's one way to do it. Take a picture, use your cell phone, use a digital camera, uh, go online if you want to get that schematic, just simply put in the uh, Shimano TTS-30 schematic, and that'll uh, you know, you'll come up in the search with results that uh, will enable you to go get that. Uh, if it's a pen reel, these reels are very similar. Uh, they all have a little bit different engineering, but not a lot uh, when you get underneath it. It's all about uh, a drag plate, uh, a series of springs uh, and washers, and uh, an ability to pull that uh, spool in to engage the drag spool and the ability to release so that the reel can free spool. You'll also notice as I'm taking these off that um, there's a... Um, series of screws. Two of them are longer. So again, take the pictures when you see something like that happen, if you're not familiar with it, and where they came from. Those two long screws came from up top here where the real harness is. Okay, last one. Now this one's under pressure from the uh, the spring, so as I pull this, the, the side plate will start to disengage. And uh, I apologize if you see me going for a Kleenex. I have a little bit of a head cold today, so uh, don't let that get in the way of uh, me trying to uh, to show you how these things work. Okay, we had a couple of pieces fall out, which uh, it's good that I have that schematic, right? So this is the drive side of the, the reel, and if most of these look the same, this is a single speed reel. So it has a main drive gear that attaches to the handle, and it has an adjuster here. Uh, I'm going to pull the main gear out, I'll show you what we did here. We cleaned this main gear up, <clears throat> we covered it with blue grease, and uh, we cleaned out the bushing and uh, coated that with some grease as well. Then you have a bearing, we have four of them in the reel, and uh, again, because of time I can't show you, but these bearings should be repacked. There's a little trim ring that holds the seal in, you have to pull that trim, trim ring, pull that off, pack it with blue grease and, and put that back in. Uh, if you can't figure that one out, it's on, that's on this side, the, uh, the trim ring. Uh, if you can't figure that out or you're nervous or you don't want to do it and you don't want to replace it with new, at a minimum, put real oil in there. I use Real X at a minimum to keep the, uh, the gear fresh. And then we have the adjuster nut on this one. And this is the one that sets the, it's a preset for where the uh, spool starts to engage and where it's at full engagement. And turning this separates that from the uh, uh, the collar here, pushing in. As you push in, that gives more tension, more drag as you back it off. It has less. We'll show you how that works uh, at the end. So I removed the collar uh, off of this one. I cleaned it all. There was some dirt in there. I put blue grease back on the top of that. And I'm going to reinsert. This has uh, got two tabs that sit in there. And then we're going to reinsert the bearing. And then we're going to put the main gear in below. So, And then this, some of you may be wondering what this is. This is actually the click function. When you bring this all the way out, it runs against the side plate here. And you'll see board circles in this plate that enables it to click. And then when you throw it backwards, it hides it and disengages that from the, uh, the clicker mechanism. So, again, I didn't have a lot of time to do this today in terms of repacking the bearings, but you see uh, how that works. Next up, we're going to remove the spool. Oh, I'm ahead of the game. Uh, yep, I'm going to remove that spool. And uh, in the back here, you're going to see the anti-reverse dogs, and a bearing. So you want to pull the bearing, and uh, we use a real fancy tool around here. This is this is an old pen reels wrench where I've bent the uh, screwdriver section of that. You slip that behind the bearing. And generally, you can pull the bearing out like that. So uh, you want to get those bearings out. You really want to, you know, this is, you know, and it's an old reel, hasn't been uh, worked a lot. 
uh, you want to repack those bearings when you get a chance. So uh, that's what I did there. That goes back in. And then you saw there's a little shim that uh, sits on top of that bearing post. So make sure that you don't lose that little shim. I'm going to just put that there and set that to the side. So here's the work now. Uh, well, let's get those first. Let's get those side plate screws off. I meant to do that. I'm, I'm kind of rushing a little bit. There's a lot of work in these reels, and I don't want to run out of time on this video in, in showing you that. But again, I'm using plastic bags for these as opposed to throwing them in the parts tray. And I'm doing this in a sequence that they come off so that I can readily put them back together. Okay. So about those pictures, so we're going to take this off now. This is where the drag mechanism is. So we have the main uh, gear on the spool, which engages with the main gear here. It sits in the bearing on that side. It also has uh, a little collar in it. That it rides in, sort of like that. And it also has a shim up top that rides on that bearing. So we're going to make sure we keep all of those pieces together. And I'm going to grab the bag to do that right now. So what happens there is it turns the reel and then the force, again, this, this piece here is pushing on the back end of the spool drive. And when it pushes on the back end of the spool drive, you'll see it move here. It's actually pushing the, the, uh, the lever drag in on that so uh, to make full contact. About those pictures, if you, uh, if you were quick here, you might not notice that there's a couple of washers sitting on the back of this and they are almost identical to the washers that are inside. So you want to make sure, again, that uh, you're taking pictures along the way and that you've made good notes about where, this, uh, where these pieces came from. So there's two uh, tension washers there. And now we're going to take this collar off. Now, Shimano makes a tool. It's a 180-degree tool. There's actually slots here that could engage it if you had a tough time getting this off. However, this one is snug is what it needs to be and uh, capable of being turned by hand so you don't need this, the uh, handle uh, but if you uh, if you find that you can't move this and you're in jeopardy of breaking this collar then I would recommend that you go get that tool okay so this came out so let's lay this out in the sequence we got the two behind and we have the collar and now we've got the business end of this reel so the first thing we have is the uh, the plate that holds the one side of the uh, the drag uh, washer assembly. It has four studs on it, four holes in the plate. They go together, but I'll, again, I'll just lay these out so you can see how that works. And then we have a 30-year-old washer here that's doing just fine, thank you very much. Uh, so this is the way that the assembly works. And um, you want to make sure that this is clean, this surface is clean. I use paper towels, but uh, go ahead and use microfiber. Some folks have told me microfiber does a better job and uh, is lint-free. Go ahead and go do that. Make sure that the side plate that's pressing on the other side of the uh, that uh, drag washer is there as well. 30 year old, it's in good clean condition, it's solid and still flexible, so we're going to go ahead and reuse that because the customer didn't want to upgrade, but I understand that CarbonX washers are also available for this if you want to go do that. Okay, we're getting the uh, getting our groove on now. We're kind of understanding how these pieces and parts go. And uh, one more series for those plastic bags. I'm going to make sure that those two go in. Now it's important to note the series that these are coming out in and also what you're doing in terms of uh, reassembly because if you get the sequences wrong or if you, uh, you set your washers up incorrectly, it's not going to spin properly. Okay, we're going to take the shaft out. Now, this is a free-turning shaft here. You can see it turning. Uh, that's uh, in free spool. That's what your shaft is doing, right? It's just sitting there. It's got two bearings, one on each side. It's got a spring mechanism, which when we, when we pull and push on this thing is going to give us the tension. And it's got a little retainer pin with that uh, spring. So I'm going to push down on the spring and pull that pin out. And then I'm going to use a little uh, uh, needle nose pliers just to make sure we keep that together. And again, be very careful with this stuff because you lose it. Uh, there's no place to hide. Okay, now I'm going to use my part straight because I'm down to my last set here. All right, with that retainer out, I can push the shaft through. And that's where you're going to see a series of tension washers here. And... Uh, what you want to do on the servicing of this one is you want to clean these 
these were uh, in horrible condition when uh, when I got it. Uh, you want to clean these things. You want to note which ones are face to face and which ones are uh, back to back because there is spaces and that does work in terms of the sensitivity of the drag. And if you uh, if you want to change it up, you can always go face to face more. And, and if you want less, you can go back to back like these are stacked. However, note that when it's coming out, particularly uh, if you're satisfied with the way that you're your sensitivity is working on it. Two burrings. There's a burring in the hole here with another little washer. I'm using my handy dandy tool for my uh, uh, removal. There's a burring. The washer goes on there. There's a burring. Again, pull that, uh, pull that retainer clip. Go in and repack, which has already been done on this, or at a minimum. Uh, go ahead and uh, oil it up good. Make sure that the internals of your shaft, uh, your spool, is clean. This has been cleaned. And then you can go reinsert the ball bearing there. And again, the same thing is true on this side. I'm not going to take it out because of the time of the video, but there's a, a bearing on this side. So there's four bearings. There's a bearing on the side plate, there's two bearings in the spool, and there's a bearing on the back side plate. You want to do that procedure to all of them. Uh, to do it properly. Okay, once we do that, we can reinsert the shaft. Kind of backing this away now, right? We're going to go in backward uh, sequence now. I popped the bearing out on this side. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I know where it goes. If I didn't know where it goes, I'd be back to my schematic, but uh, that's okay. And then into my pot parts bucket for the two that I did not put uh, into plastic bags, the spring and the pin. Compress that spring back down. That'll give you access to the, uh, the hole. You can set that, that spring up. And that's how that uh, gets reassembled there. Again, you want to just turn it, make sure it's free turning, which it is, and uh, we're in good condition and good shape there. Okay, so we've cleaned up. I've shown you where the bearings are. I showed you uh, how I service them. I did not show you repacking them due to the time, uh, but understand that they do need to be repacked. Okay, on this side, same thing, you wanted to clean it. This was a very dirty reel at one point, and uh, all of that has been cleaned up. It's been re-oiled and lubed, and uh, it's ready to, to reinstall. So uh, we're going to go back and show you the how the, the uh, drag system comes together. You'll remember the reverse order that we did. These are, uh, again, I, I know these because I've worked on this one. Uh, I, had to, uh, I had to do a little refresher course, quite honestly, when I did this. So uh, I went in and I looked at that schematic before I got crazy. But the studs go into the, uh, the backer plate here. The clean drag sits on the, around the studs on this side. You line that pin up. There's a indentation on the back of the uh, pressure plate there. You want to make sure you're in on that. And then you want to kind of press down on this to get the spring to compress. And then you can put the, uh, the collar back on. Now when you're doing this, make sure that it threads easily. Don't horse anything. If it's uh, not going on, you don't want to strip it. This is something that uh, you only get one chance at. Okay, so we're on. I'm going to grab a paper towel and just tighten it. As, hand tighten is fine on that. And then remember we had the two of these washers that went in. Okay, so that's the rebuild of the shaft, the cleaning, the uh, oiling of the, uh, the bearings. Uh, if you didn't repack them, hopefully you have the time and you can repack them like I did and uh, set that up. Okay, so now we're back in and uh, we should, uh, should be okay. Right, yep. I hear the clickers working in the background. Okay, so now we go to the, uh, the spool gear. Remember that came with a collar and it came with a uh, the gear itself. Now the gear has a slot in it and that sits over the pin. So make sure when you put your collar in there that you line that up and, and that it seats properly. There we go. And then you remember there was that one little uh, washer there that goes facing the bearing.
And again, I apologize for this, uh, this little bit of congestion I have. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get too bad uh, as we go forward. Okay, so we're set up now. We've done this side. We repacked this bearing. We, uh, we lubed the, uh, the adjuster. We've got the main gear in there. We've lubed the shaft. We can, uh, I'll just show you briefly, we can put a little bit of blue grease on that, uh, that spool gear. It'll work itself around to the main gear. And uh, then we're going to reassemble. So we take the side plate, line up the, uh, the top holes with that uh, harness. Now you got to apply pressure. And that's my problem here because I've got to take the screws out of the bag. Now we get there. Okay, better have them in the bag than looking for them on the floor somewhere. Remember when we did this now? You've got short screws and long screws. Alright, I'm pressing down as you can tell the tension in my hand. And I do north, south, east, west to uh, keep the the tension properly on the, uh, the side plate as I go to, to install. So I'm going to do, we'll pretend this is north, it's kind of east, but that's okay. Get that one down. Alright, and then we're going to put another short one, put them on the bottom. Remember the short ones go around the side plate, the two long ones go uh, up top. So I mentioned this is a 30 year old reel. And one of the purposes of Second Chance Tackle is to do that, to repair reels, even if they're aged. I do all kinds, whatever comes into the shop, but if they're aged, I don't shy away from them. Uh, actually, I have a body of work now. I've been doing this for over 20 years, so I kind of know the older stuff as well. And uh, the whole idea here is to give those reels a second chance. There's no reason why this reel, if not properly maintained, uh, can't go on fishing for quite some time to go. Uh, like I said, the one thing that's subject to wear, that drag, I understand is available as Carbonex. So you could actually get the new drag if you needed it. And uh, those other parts, as you saw me coming out with those, those are quality die cut gears. They're, uh, you know, the, uh, the bushing, maybe that, maybe that would wear a little bit, I'm not sure. But overall, this is a high quality set of components in this reel and it's designed to last. And particularly, like my, my customer brought this one in. Uh, He's not out there fishing every day. I mean, this isn't Wicked Tuna or something uh, where these guys are out there uh, you know, putting heavy usage on it. He's a week weekend fisherman, spring and fall for the big fish. Takes it down to uh, the Caribbean when he goes on vacation down there. So, uh, you know, what is he going to get? 15, 20 trips maybe a year, let's say. Uh, and uh, for, some, for a reel, it was probably designed to fish to 200 or plus days a year, uh, you know. Hey, in one year the design, he can get 10 years for the way he's using it. So, again, uh, don't be uh, don't be charmed by the fashion statements that are out there. Say I got to have the the latest color or the greatest uh, you know funky looking handle or something. These uh, these old things, uh, you know, they work just fine. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going back up top now. We're going to put that collar on. It controls the stops for the free spool and the. Uh, uh, full engagement and uh, I start by taking the two long screws which are the ones that are the stops there's a little uh, metal collar oops that one fell off there there's a collar on the top of the screw and there's a metal collar below the screw and those are on the two outside posts so I want to get those on first and I have shorter screws that go in the middle. Okay, so I'm just going to line them up, try and get one of these started here. I think I caught that one. I did, and then we'll come over and do that on the other side here. And I'm noticing I kept two screws I didn't finish here. Let me go finish those side plates. 